me next uh, invite uh, to the podium um, Bastian Mormon. Uh, he's the head Water Sustainable Business Advisory, uh, South Asia IFC. Bastian, please. Um, thank you and good morning, um, everyone. It's a great pleasure to be back in, uh, at the meeting of the CEO Water Mandate. I, I participated in the meeting in Johannesburg, I think it was a few years ago, two years ago, and since then um, a lot of water has flown um, through the rivers, uh, or we can also say a lot of water has been extracted from the ground, and that's probably a more topical um, description for what we're facing in India. So um, I will talk today about the um, about water security as opposed to um, um, water stewardship because I think that's the topic which is really most acute here in India and, uh, and also is really uh, describes the business case because um, you know I mean when we talk to corporates here and I've been here two years in this country um, working on the water and the private sector and it's just it's not it's very difficult to really get traction um, with most of the of the corporates who see this as sort of a far away or compliance or strictly inside the fence issue but when you really describe the issue from the perspective of risk business risk you've got to really talk about water security and I think that is, is really what gets more attention from the private sector and also sets the stage for collective action because it's a, it's a shared risk like we're always saying it's, a, it's the security issue is, 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 um, is really what, what ties the different stakeholders together. So I'll have my uh, presentation three, three parts. I'll talk briefly about the problem, what I call the big four barriers, and then some ideas about the ways forward. So we talk a lot about agri-water use, and uh, in this the average the world is 70% used by agriculture, in this country it's 85%. So 85% of water is used by agriculture, which in turn is used for food. And this is an interesting analysis which shows you where India is today in its food consumption. So the, 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 blue, uh, the blue bar is really uh, showing you how low I India is today in its dietary, uh, um, dietary water requirements. Um, China is uh, shown in the red bar for those who are um, far away and of course the US not surprising is the yellow somewhere in the right top part but the really the concerning the concerning message here is that if um, India is going to be growing in GDP but also more particularly if you see more urbanization happening um, the, the amount of, of meat consumption is going up rapidly I'm very sorry to say that I mean this country is such just as great vegetarian food and I'm enjoying it daily uh, is, is actually turning into a median country and that has huge um, implications for water requirements so this message is pretty bad so, so, so we are already in a crisis and the crisis is just getting much worse as you can see here uh, on, this, on this graph this particular um, research by FIO shows the water uh, the agri-water use per capita and uh, you see that uh, the, the big three consumers uh, for agri-use um, are the uh, is North America, India and, uh, and Oceania, particularly Australia for Australia there's probably a lot of, of, uh, of exports um, and um, um, you wanna, yeah, I think I can how does this work? Just pressing the button. Okay. So we see the um, the South Asia is particularly India, and of course Australia and, and the US are the three big water users per capita. And um, of course, with some exports, as uh, was just pointed out by uh, our early presenters, and certainly for Australia, that's mainly export uh, exports uh, of agricultural produce. But the worrisome thing here is that with a low dietary consumption, you're already, India is already such a huge consumer of water. And so it's just going to get, that bar is just going to get wider and wider. And, uh, uh, and so the big conclusion of this, uh, um, of this graph is that India is super, super, super inefficient with its water use by agriculture. That actually is good news. 
that's actually very good news because there's something we can do about it. And so uh, I really want to um, give these pictures because really the response of, of what we're discussing in the next couple of days uh, for India is, is in agriculture. Now the, the country is in crisis and the country is particularly in crisis regarding groundwater. I mean this crisis is totally uncontrolled. And I'm just showing you here for Rajasthan a few of these trends where in 84, uh, 80% of the blocks were essentially safe water. I mean, that's just a generation ago. Uh, Rajasthan, as you all know, is a very dry country. You would say, you know, Rajasthan has been in crisis for the last, whatever, thousands of years. It's not. Uh, it was not in crisis just 20, 30 years ago, 25 years ago. And look where it is today, 2008, or I mean, it's not the latest data. I don't have later data. But today, I mean, 14% of the blocks are still safe. Uh, and 86% uh, is in trouble. Uh, I'm sure that that number has gone worse, even as we are, uh, as we have um, more updated figures. So, the real crisis is groundwater. And that's what we need to think about. And there's a there's a big difference in this country between surface water and the irrigation systems, command areas. All have their own issues. But for the private sector, are really because you're drawing so much of your water from the from the ground. That's where the, the risk is, and that's where you've got to look at, uh, at water security. And then this is the political reality. I mean, we're, we're dealing with 120 million farmers, and the scale is massive. Um, so it's the scale of numbers which is, which is really frightening, because, I mean, uh, it, uh, we see all these initiatives of corporates when you say, you know, okay, we've reached 1,000 farmers. If you reach 1,000 farmers as a CSR activity, we need 120,000 of those initiatives we're not going to get very soon. Okay? So if your CSR project is, is reaching 10,000 farmers, okay, we only need 12,000 of these initiatives. Well, I don't know how many companies we have in the room here, but we're very short of that. So if your CSR program is reaching a million farmers, okay, this goes probably beyond your imagination. But if, 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 you're, if you're reaching a million farmers, we only need 1,200 companies. Let's get somewhere nearer, okay? Let's get nearer. I, mean, I, I think in this country there are probably 10 or 20 really enlightened corporates who would say, you know, one way or the other. I mean, honestly, I was having a discussion with a, with a client of ours, and of course he's probably presented in this room. I won't give the name. We're talking about uh, what's, what's the next stage of their water engagement. And I said, well, why don't you think about a national water pledge? Well, you will reach a million farmers and a million hectares in collective actions. ISC is not doing any program which is not reaching, which is not reaching more than 100,000 farmers because it's the skill which is challenging. I'm not going to dwell on this um, because I'm, I know that uh, the moderator is looking at me regularly as a watch. So um, um, this is the, but this, this is this is playing out very strongly in India. This, the the multi-water nexus it's in all these dimensions, you know, water security, which is livelihood for for, for communities and businesses. And uh, I mean, the food security is a national priority. That's what people talk about. And I see talking about my management, my senior management is talking about what food, food priority is the number one issue. I mean, so even organizations like the IFC is putting water security as something which is sort of, I mean, more at the back burner, to be honest. So a lot of issues we're facing here. Okay. Just here to, 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 to point out this is research that Mike McKinsey has been doing with the Water Resources Group, uh, and it's, it tells you that in 2030, deficit will be half the demand. I mean, that, that's, that's really frightening. So, I mean, there's less than a gener generation from now that... Uh, but this is a national balance, okay? The national, for all of India, which includes the wet parts and the dry parts, can you imagine what's happening in the dry parts? That's scarcity, that's... that's, that's uh, so this is all a combination of industry needing water and, and urbanization needing water and agriculture needing water. They're crying for more water. This is at the status quo. There's, uh, we're in a deep, deep trouble. So the four big barriers which restrict, in my view, participatory water resource management, you can put them in four blocks and all here. So the first is, is the government. I mean, this is, water is a government affair and, uh, and a really private, private sector could be catalyzed and a player in its own areas. But then we, I think well, you've got to reach a million farms. You say, well, let the government do that. But unfortunately, the government is totally disconnected from water resource management. 
I mean, it, a lot of departments are involved in that. Uh, agriculture, uh, water resource, uh, um, urban development, industries, etc., etc. And they're not talking to each other. Now, the problem in this country is that government is really at two levels. You've got the central government, you've got the state level government. And water is a state level affair. So if people at the center already have difficulties sort of coming out with the common views, uh, it's, it's even more hopeless for that to be percolating down to the state level. So it's totally disconnected, a disconnected uh, uh, agenda at the government side, which is really, really one of the big problems. And the other big problem is that water has been seen so much as a, as a sort of supply issue for, for thousands of years. I mean, the irrigation department, I mean, every, every, every time again, that was the, there's a solution, uh, more canals. Now we've reached the end of it. So now suddenly the, 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 the irrigation department was just renamed water resource department. And they suddenly have to deal with all kinds of issues they're not equipped for because they're engineers. The big other issue is the, the stakeholder mistrust. I mean, there's a huge mistrust. Now, the, you don't usually think about mistrust between private sector and uh, a public sector, but it's also frightening between private sector and private sector. Companies don't like to work together here. That's really frightening. I mean, companies find it very hard to engage, particularly local to local. I mean, multinational and local, that works well. The local and multinational to multinational and generally, okay, I mean, fairly well. The local to local is a big issue. Big, big mistrust. Weak private sector motivation, the awareness is there, but the, the motivation is weak, and of course, enforcement is also very, very difficult here. A couple of ideas in the few minutes that have left on, on, the, um, on the road forward. So private sector has to take leadership because of the earlier barriers private sector has the private sector has the systems private, well first it has the vision private sector can think long term government thinks for four years, five years private sector thinks 10, 20 years but the long term thinking will be coming from private sector but also the long term risk assessment when you're investing in a facility you want to return over 10, 20 years uh, you wanna, you wanna, you're going to get the returns on the next steel mill investment so there's a long term think, thinking private sector has systems planning system, management systems, which is very, very important. The private sector can be innovative, can bring the latest, latest technologies to the table. So if we really want to do this at scale, we need the private sector to lead this. Um, I'm not going to dwell on this. This is, I think, some of you have probably seen it. The only point I want to make here uh, is farmers are key. If you don't put farmers first and foremost at the center of your water security strategy, you're not, you're, not, you're, not, you're not addressing the issue. Now, you need to work inside the fence. I mean, inside the fence is very important. You need to work at best practice inside the fence. The only reason you want to do that, am I zero now? Okay, one minute. The only, only, only reason you want to do that is because you want to be a credible partner in the conversations. But it's really farmers, uh, and we need to think about the business case for farmers. Anything we're doing in the collective action plan needs to be at four levels. You need to think about the macro, what, we, what I call the macro, the meso, the micro, and the nano. Now, this is, the nano is not, to, not for any reference with Tata, that's just a coincidence here. But the nano is the most important here, it's the farmer level. And so you've got to have information systems, hydrological information systems, in terms of, of watershed management, groundwater flows, etc etc at all these levels the nano is a farmer the micro is a village meso is sort of the district the block that's where the project will be handling most you you, you think about a district three four hundred thousand farmers there you can get the impact follow the ACT model I'm not going to dwell here act of analyze convene and act this is this is this is a fairly simple model to engage with the stakeholders and this is a very complicated slide. I'm not going to be spending any much time on this. It's the same as McKinsey cost curve. The only point is that all the solutions are yellow, and yellow means farming. So it's, it's, you can easily solve the problem in this country, as I said earlier. So inefficient, agriculture so inefficient, that the solutions are all there easily on, on the bar. On the, these are the, the famous uh, levers. And my final slide is uh, a call for a national platform, where these different stakeholders who are trying this in different places in India are coming together and sharing information. Now this can, this can really tie into the, the action hub from CEO Water Mandate which is looking at a, at a river basin. 
But this is a big country, and so I, don't, I think the next few years we only have four or five or six or maybe eight of these initiatives sort of popping up left and right. And we need to come together to share the lessons. And, and I put some names there. I mean, IFC, CW, GAZ, WWF, Slayerdat, Water Resources Group, Sea Water Mandate, CEI, FICI, of course, others. And then the private sector. So I think the, a, lot of us, a lot of them, these people are in the room here. And the call is for a collective action. Time is now. Thank you very much.